We all know that there is definitely a cost when it comes to having kids, and I am expecting baby number two due in June. So today I'm walking you through our baby budget to show you how much we plan to spend in all different categories for baby number two. Hey guys, I'm Marissa and welcome back to my channel. Here on my channel, we talk about life and money and how you can enjoy life while still accomplishing financial goals through the use of a budget. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, scroll down and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any new videos. Like I said, I am pregnant with baby number two and we are having another boy due in June, 2022. My son Peter will turn two right before that. So I'm really excited to have brothers so close in age. And you know, when we had our first son, we definitely spent a lot of money on things, becoming first time parents, buying all the baby gear, all of, you know, all that stuff. So I feel like I know a little bit more now as a second time mom of the things that I need. And also since it's my second baby and my second boy, I don't really need a lot, but there definitely are some things that we still plan to spend money on for this baby. And so today I wanted to show you how much we plan to spend on baby number two and in which categories that'll be. And if you are expecting a baby, I actually have a course called Budgeting for Baby, which is everything you need to know about planning your finances for having a baby. And I created this course after I had my son, Peter. I learned so much when I was preparing to have him of all the things I needed, how to work through through like insurance costs, how to plan for expenses, ways to save, just like all the financial things that happen when you have a baby because it is such a huge financial time in your life. So I will have a link to that course in the description box down below. I will also leave a coupon code for you to get a special discount for watching this video. So use that special coupon code and you can get a discount on the course. It's already super affordable, but you can check it out there. It's a video course and you get lifetime access. So whether you are planning to have a baby soon or you're already expecting, this is definitely the course for you and you can check it out there. So let me walk you through our budget. So what I'm going to be showing you are some pages that I have from the Budgeting for Baby workbook. This workbook is included in the course that I talked about and it's super pretty. I'll show you guys like a close up of it. But the course comes with this workbook filled with all sheets and things that you may need as you're planning out all these financial aspects for having a baby, including setting your baby budget. So I'm using the baby fund calculator page here to show you how much we're planning to spend in each kind of category related to having a baby. And this will help determine how much we need to save each month in order to have all of these expenses covered by the time we have the baby. So the first thing that I have on the list here, medical out of pocket costs. I have $6,000 listed here. So we are on a high deductible insurance plan this year with an HSA. I love the HSA and the triple tax advantage that it has, but we're super excited to be on the HSA plan this year. But I will say that our high deductible for our specific insurance plan isn't that high and the max out of pocket is pretty low as well. So for my individual max out of pocket, that is $3,000 like per person. So as being the person who's going to go through labor and delivery and have the baby and everything, I am planning to hit that max out of pocket with this pregnancy. I hit it with my last pregnancy with my son Peter, hit the max out of pocket, and then we had additional expenses that went toward our son Peter for his stay in the hospital and things like that. So I'm planning to at least hit 3,000 for myself, and then we will also probably have some additional expenses for our second son when he is in the hospital. We're all in the same family medical plan through my husband's employer, and that is a pretty great benefit for us right now, especially as we're having a baby because the family max out of pocket, so the max amount that we will have to pay in 2022 is $6,000 which again, honestly, isn't very much. And we know that at least 3,000 is going to come from me and we'll also have some related to baby. So 6,000 is the family max out of pocket, the most we're gonna pay. So this is what I budgeted for. And since we are having this year where we're going to have a lot of medical expenses, we've also kind of just decided that this is going to be the year that we get all of our health tune-ups and things like that. Um, so we are planning to like see specialists and do the things, get all of that taken care of this year because we're planning to basically hit the max out of pocket. So that is um, our plan for this year and how much that's going to cost. If you are planning to have a baby, again, I talk about this in so much more in my budgeting for baby course, but I would highly recommend 
chatting with your insurance company and they can help find a quote as to how much you could expect to pay for labor and delivery and what that would look like for your insurance and making sure that you understand what's covered, making sure that you understand the deductible versus the max out of pocket and how that works. Um, again, I go into much more depth than that in the course and um, that's a really huge part of having a baby and a huge expense. It's definitely the biggest expense that we have that we're planning on. The next line item that we have here is maternity leave supplementation. I am self-employed. I do everything here on YouTube and so I don't work for an employer. I don't get to take a maternity leave, which is honestly kind of hard when you're self-employed because you don't actually get to take a maternity leave. So I'm not planning to save anything to supplement my maternity leave, but um, I am hoping to be able to get ahead on work so that I can take at least like two months off, I guess, where I'm not having to post um, consistently. Next we have is baby supplies and furniture, which is the next biggest category that I have, and I have this at 1240. So I've actually listed out all of the things that I plan to buy for this baby. That is coming in a separate video. You can subscribe to my channel and that video will be out shortly and I'll show you all the things that I plan to buy as a second time mom. But like I said, since I'm having another boy, there isn't a lot that we need. I've already bought a couple things, but 1240 is what I've added up to be like, the basic things that we need. Also, since it's like your second kid, you also don't really have a baby shower, so I just know that I'm like covering these, you know, a few things myself. Next we have is a baby moon. We're not planning on going on any kind of baby moon this year. We didn't for our first son, Peter, either, because he was born at the beginning of the pandemic, so that baby moon got canceled, but we're not doing anything for that this time around either. Next we have is maternity slash newborn photos. This is something that I did not get to do with my son, Peter, because he was born May 2020 and we never got to do maternity photos, never got to do newborn photos because obviously it was at the beginning of the pandemic and it was just a really scary uncertain time and that just wasn't happening. Remember when everyone was taking like photos at their like front door, like a photographer would come up and you'd like take family photos at your front door. Anyway, well, so we never got to do that and that's something that I would really like to do this time around. And part of me, it just like, this is like, I guess a side note, this doesn't really have to do with the budget, but I just feel super weird of like, having a second baby and doing more of the first time mom things because I didn't get to do it with my first son because of the pandemic. So it kind of makes me sad that I'll have like newborn photos of my second son, but not of my first. And that is something that's like really only for me that I'm going to deal with. It's not going to be like my son Peter's going to grow up one day and be like, why does my brother have newborn photos and I don't? Like, is he going to care? Absolutely not. But it's just something that I'm sad that like, I didn't get to do with him, but I'm hoping that like we could do, you know, newborn and family photos and be able to like incorporate our first son Peter in that because I just, I don't know. It's just so weird. If you had a baby, if you had like a first baby during the pandemic and now you're having a second, like, let me know if you kind of, if you feel the same, because it's just like such a weird feeling of like feeling like I'm going to do more with my son or like my second son, and, like take him out more and like do that stuff that I didn't get to do with my first. So Definitely already feeling some mom guilt in that. The next line item that we have here are classes and I don't have anything budgeted for classes. We took some classes with our son, Peter. Um, they were, we did like an in-person labor and delivery class, which is really great. We did that in February and then everything shut down. And then uh, the other ones we took online and those were useful as well, especially as being first time parents. But I just don't feel like we need that this time around because we've already experienced it. And so we don't need like all of those classes. Next we have is maternity clothing and I budgeted $200 here. That'll be for, you know, a couple things. I still have some maternity clothes that I had with Peter, like jeans and leggings, like the big things, I guess. But I actually borrowed some maternity clothes from a friend for my last pregnancy. So this time I'm just planning to buy a few like shirts and things. And hopefully like maybe a maternity dress. Never got to buy one last time because of the pandemic. Never had like a baby shower to go to or anything because of the pandemic. So. Anyway, I'll allow myself some money there as well. And then additional expenses that we have listed out here, I don't have anything budgeted for that, nothing that I can think of right now that would be additional. And so the total that we have is $7,640. So as you can see, most of that is the medical out-of-pocket costs. And I'm not sure if, you know, probably not all of that will be related to labor and delivery, but I'm just planning to do 6,000 as like the worst case scenario. And then we can, you know, if we end up with extra money set aside, then that's a great problem to have, right? 
So now we have months until baby. It's currently January. We are having this baby in June. So we have six months to save for this baby. And that means that we need to save $1,273.33 each month for baby related costs. So for me in my personal budget, I actually am going to separate this out because I'm not sure if we'll hit that $6,000 max family max out of pocket. I would rather save medical and then I'll save for all of the other baby expenses. So I'm going to put a thousand a month into medical and $273.33 roughly into my baby fund each month. And so that helps to calculate how much money I need to save each month. This is using what we call a sinking fund, which is setting aside money every single month for something that you know is coming up. And I really love using sinking funds because it takes a large cost and it makes it more attainable to save for because you're saving a little bit every single month. And we're preparing ahead of time. We have six months to save. So we have plenty of time to be able to set aside this money and purchase things as we go. And the other awesome thing about this is that I already have money in my baby fund because it's January. I've put money into it and I've already purchased a couple things, which I will show you guys that as well. On another sheet in the workbook, I have an expense tracking section and I've written down some of the things that I've already purchased, which includes my breast pump. I already ordered that, bought that, knew the one that I wanted to get. And again, this is like a little hint towards um, the video I'm going to be making about the things that I'm buying for baby number two. But first thing on there is my breast pump. I already bought that and that was $110. And then I also bought the Hatch Sound Machine. They were doing like a sale for it. I wasn't planning to buy it this early, but there was a sale going on where you got like the Hatch Mini included with the regular Hatch Sound Machine. This is the same sound machine that we have for Peter's room. So I just bought that as well. That was $59.99. So those are, I think, are the only things I'm planning to buy for the month of January related to baby. Hopefully, I mean, it's only January 9th as they film this video. So definitely we could be spending um, more money on that. But the great thing is that I have money set aside in my baby fund already. So I have that permission to spend starting now until I give birth. So that is a look at our baby fund and our baby budget for this baby number two. Again, stay tuned. I'm planning to do some videos doing a whole series of what I'm doing differently as a second time mom related to just like motherhood stuff and also the financial side as well. And like I said, the things that I plan to buy. So you can subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of that. Let me know in the comments below if you are expecting a baby and if you are figuring out your baby budget and how much you are planning to save for all of your baby related expenses. And if you are expecting, don't forget to check out my course, Budgeting for Baby, where you can learn everything you need to know about planning your finances for this really exciting time of life and you get a free workbook included. So it's filled with lots of awesome pages that of course I'm using as I'm tracking everything for my pregnancy this time around. And don't forget to use that coupon code so you can save on the course as well. So with that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.